Hello and welcome to the first episode in my new colour chemistry series. This series is not intended to confuse or scare people, it's just to give those of you who want to know a little bit more about how painting really works and some tips on what might help you understand your paints a bit better, a little bit more information. So I'm going to explain today what colour really is. We're going to start with light. Light is made up of waves. And if we were to consider waves on the beach and we see the waves coming in, we might have waves coming into the beach that look like this, and we might have waves coming into the beach that look more like this. The difference between them is how long they are. These are very short, these are very long. And we simply state that the length of a whole wave, which would be probably about that, is the wave length. It's not very original. And the wavelength of waves is a really important way of measuring them. In what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, light is a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it's a range of wavelengths, a very small range of wavelengths in the grand scheme of things. And it is as follows. It's measured in the unit of nanometers. So we've got centimeters and millimeters. And below that, many of you know the micron, also known as the micrometer. And below micrometers, we have the nanometers. So uh, it's not a particularly complicated little scale, but there it is. So these are measured in nanometers. And anything really between about 400 and about 700, 750 is considered visible light. If you go into longer wavelengths, so longer waves, you get the infrared. That's the remote control for your television. The light on the LED on that that you can't see, that's infrared. If you want to see it, view it through the camera on your mobile phone and you'll see it glow white. That's just the way your phone camera interprets it, but it's actually a series of flashes of infrared is how your TV works. Other end of the scale, we've got ultraviolet. That's the stuff that gives you sunburn. So basically the shorter wavelengths are the ones that are more damaging to biology. Longer ones are pretty harmless. That's why we have microwaves and radio waves. They're the really long ones. Microwaves have wavelengths of three centimetres. Radio waves can be kilometres. X-rays and gamma rays, nasty, nasty stuff, are right down at the really short end of the scale. So these are all effectively different forms of light, if we want to put it in layman's terms. Where we see colour in light is that different wavelengths within the visible spectrum appear to us as different colours. So red, for example, is around 700, green is around about 550, blue is a bit shorter, indigo doesn't really exist, violet is about 400, and I've roughly put on the rainbow just as a kind of something people recognise. So that's how light works. Different wavelengths of light, different length waves of light give us different colours of light. So if I were to take my light that's up here, my, my strip light, and I were to put green cellophane around it, this would all look green. We'd have green light, OK? I think we'd, we'd all understand that. What we're really seeing, if we were to look at the light, and imagine on this little graph, this is the actual wavelength, so the colour effectively. So we'd have, if we've got 550 here, we'd have blue down here, yellow up here, this is green. This direction is how much of it we have. And when we have green shining down, what we would have is most of the light coming down is green, There'd be a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue, but most of it would be like 550 green. So that's kind of easy to understand. When you've got light rather than paint, you're looking at colour basically being what is shining on you, OK? What, what, you are, what is coming out of the light. But when we're looking at paint, it's actually really a very different picture. So we have to consider something a little bit different. And what I've drawn here is, let's say, light bulb light. We've got the same picture. We've got purple down here, red up here. What you'd actually get with light bulb is that you'd get a little bit of everything. And when they're all mixed together, our eyes see them as white. So that's the white light coming from the light bulb, OK? No coloured filters, a little bit of everything. We've got some Prussian blue paint over here, slightly greenish blue. When light hits that, what actually happens is, this is a slightly different diagram. The distance this direction this time is how much of the light the Prussian blue sucks up and absorbs. It absorbs all the purple light and all the reds and yellows and oranges. And what it leaves us with is just the blues and greens that are not absorbed 
So what we see is the blue and green bouncing off the dye, off the pigment, into our eyes. And all the other colours, all the other wavelengths of light, UV, yellow, red, all get actually taken up by the dye and we don't see them. And I can demonstrate that to you really easily because I've got a little white light torch here and I'm going to turn off my filming lights. And if I shine my white light on it, you see you've got that blue green coming back nothing special if i change the wavelength and i go to uv this is about 350 to 400 nanometers so beyond purple on the paper if you've seen my fluorescence video that blue that you see is the fluorescence of a dye that is added to paper to make it glow if i shine that over it you can see it absorbs it nothing is coming back we can't see anything because Prussian blue just soaks it up. That's it. It's gone. I move it further away so less of it gets there. You can see it's not interacting with UV at all, whereas certain dyes and pigments do. If I was shining red on it, you'd also see nothing happens. But if I was shining blue or green on it, you'd see the colour of the dye really easily. Now, I've oversimplified that a bit, so please don't comment in the comments below saying your physics is wrong. I'm simplifying it. This is basic physics for watercolourists, okay? It's not quantum physics for Stephen Hawking. It is nice and basic and simple. So I wanted to use this to explain what actually is colour. Because in subsequent videos, I'm going to show you different colours and explain how they behave chemically. I'm not really going to go into the physics again, but for you to understand my next video, which contains some fluorescence and some fluorescent pigments, I wanted to start with this. So if you want any further questions, please ask them below. I love answering your questions. I love interacting with people. I think YouTube is a great way for people to learn and it's a great way for people like me that, you know, ultimately I am, a, I am an academic. I teach. I don't teach watercolour. I teach bacteriology. I teach physiology. It's a great opportunity for me to teach a wider audience and in a subject that I don't normally teach but that has been close to my heart for nearly 40 years. Thank you all very much and... Please, please do comment if you've got any further questions or subscribe or thumbs up, whatever you want to do. Thank you.